So we've talked about getting data into AWT core or IoT core, AWT's old Java. Don't need to talk about that. Uh, what do you do with it at that point? And Don talked a little bit about running rules that could take the data, decide for specific data elements where to send it. And it could invoke a Lambda, uh, could write directly to a database. And one thing that he showed is writing to a Kinesis stream. And a Kinesis stream is kind of a nice feature uh, because then you can hang other things off of it. And you have a lot of tools in Amazon to do that. So let's start by talking about what a Kinesis stream is. And it's a persistent log of messages. It lives in the middle space of kind of message messaging between message queues, traditional message queues on the one end, where you put messages in and pull them out and one consumer grabs a message and does something with it, and then it's done, and PubSub, where you put in multiple consumers can read the messages. But once the, if you're not, subscribe to the message queue when the message is put into it or the topic, it's gone. You're never going to see it. Kinesis messages are persisted. So let's see if I can get the laser button here. There we go. So messages are persisted by default for one day, but up to seven days. And in that seven days, you can either, when you connect to Kinesis, you can say, I want to start at the current head of the queue, the latest message or I want to start at the oldest message in the queue, the trim horizon, and read forward. And why it's called the trim horizon is once a message gets past the trim horizon, it's gone. So seven days, but then they're deleted. You can also go anywhere in the middle. Every message has a sequence number, and if you know that sequence number, you can start reading from the sequence number. And where this is really useful is that you might have a message consumer that has to shut down for some reason. As long as you record the last sequence number that you read, you can always pick up uh, where you left off, unless, of course, uh, the messages have passed the trim horizon. There's also, although I don't show it, each message is also timestamped. And you can go into Kinesis and say, start reading messages at this timestamp and move forward. So you can, for example, uh, you can write something that says, grab the last five minutes worth of messages because I know the current time, I can figure out the timestamp, and let's process those five minutes worth of messages. Another nice thing about Kinesis is it's very scalable. So you have shards, and each shard can accept up to 1,000 messages per second or one megabyte per second and mix, mix and match. So if your messages are two kilobytes in size, each shard can accept 500 messages per second. And maybe you have more than that. Maybe you're a high volume. You simply add shards, and you add shards to match the volume that you need. You, the incoming records get distributed to a given shard based on what's called a partition key. And you could make a random partition key, which just puts them into whatever shard it fits into, or you could use something like the device ID. Where the device ID is nice is that you can then go back and you know that all messages for that device are in the same shard. So if you want to look for a specific device and you know what shard it belongs to, you can just read that shard as opposed to reading the entire stream. Uh, you should, of course, since Kinesis is a distributed system, never rely on ordering. Some people think that you know, the messages will be in order. Those are the orders that Kinesis receives them. You can have multiple writers to a Kinesis stream, uh, multiple producers. So this slide is a typical example from using Kinesis as the center of a logging pipeline where your applications are writing log messages. And you could have anything that can connect to your Kinesis stream can write messages. In the case of IoT, you'd only have IoT core sitting here on the end. You could also have multiple consumers, as I said. You can have uh, you do have read throughput limits, although you can work around those. But you can have, uh, for example, applications, an on-premises app reading from the Kinesis stream and doing something with it. Uh, applications running on EC2 or Lambda. Kinesis will invoke your Lambda functions without you having to explicitly read the stream. And two co-branded products, which we're going to look at in a minute, are Kinesis Firehose and Kinesis Analytics. 
So the Kinesis fire hose exists to batch up messages. Kinesis is a stream of messages, but a lot of destinations don't want streaming messages. They want blocks of message. Uh, if you've worked with Redshift, uh, Amazon's decision support database, it really likes million row updates. It'll be okay with thousand row updates. What you do not do is individual inserts. So you can set up Kinesis Firehose to read messages off the Kinesis stream, batch them up to however many megabytes uh, or time, and then upload them in bulk. Similarly with Elasticsearch, uh, which is a classic approach for a logging pipeline. And Firehose will also aggregate your messages into files that it then uploads to S3. So that gives you your archive of messages or a tool for building a data lake where you have files on S3 that contain a significant chunk of messages, let's say 15 minutes worth of messages. Analytics takes a different approach and it's streaming transformation based on SQL. So in Kinesis Analytics, you define and they, they overload the term streams, but you define internal streams, uh, and then you define a pump, which will take messages out of the source stream, apply some transformation to it using SQL, and write it into the output stream. So in this case, I have an example where uh, temperature data, whoops, let me back up there. Temperature data is coming in, and I'm writing it over a five minute window, uh, unfortunately, the mouse picks up the little mouse thing. You, it's a windowing function down at the bottom that says for five minutes, uh, calculate the minimum, maximum, number of messages, average, and standard deviation over that window. Okay. All right. And then on the right side, uh, you can see the output that comes out of this. Uh, basically, I am taking, I have one device on this example, but over a range that, let's get rid of that thing. Over a five minute range, roughly five minutes, I get 29 readings. That's about right. I'm sending out every 10 seconds. The average temperature, it's a rolling average, uh, 79 degrees. And then at this point, I put my finger over the sensor so it started to go up. Well, that's kind of interesting is I then used the rolling average temperature and I wrote a different query using Kinesis Analytics that would directly trigger a lambda function. So in this case, if the temperature starts spiking in your room, you probably want to notify someone. Uh, so I do what's arguably a bad thing. I'm going one standard deviation away from the, the moving average. Probably you want three or four. Uh, but again, I write as SQL I have my source stream, which is my, I do a join here, I have my source stream, which is my raw readings. I have that average temperature stream, which I created in the last step. And I have a query that says join them. And if the temperature is higher or lower than the rolling average, do something with it. In this case, the do something, and we'll do this in the workshop this afternoon, is invoke a Lambda function, which could then send out an email, SNS, whatever. All right. This is a very short talk, but plenty of time for questions if you have them. Yes? Uh, what do you get in that lambda event? Is it a row? Yes. So the question is, what do you get in the lambda event? And if you look here, the, the outliers, which is the output stream of this query, contains device, average temperature, and actual temperature. I could use any of the input fields from either of the two joined sources. So the Lambda event will get a JSON message. 